Hi, I'm Lee Han, and I'm Chinese Australian. Hi, I'm Emmanuel, and I'm from West Africa, Ghana. Hi, I'm Anas, and I'm Muslim South African. It's not something that's really spoken of, because it's believed like it's a bad omen, and it's actually believed that you might become single forever. <laughs> that if you talk about stuff like that, so you're not actually allowed to. It's slowly getting there, but it's a very hard topic to talk to, especially in the open. The youth in my community, they have kind of more of an understanding because it's becoming more and more open. As I've started to discover my, myself and learn to cope with my mental health issues, I've also had friends come up to me and they tell me about their mental health issues because they feel like I understand them or that I won't judge them because they're worried that their parents would judge them. So I've had like a lot of challenges, but as well a lot of support. For me, I think I speak Chinese at home, but my Chinese isn't obviously the best, so I lack the language a lot of times to explain to people in my community, to talk about different experiences. So then you resort to uh, take like depression, for example, like the only words you know are like sad, so it's hard to describe that language. But aside from that, I think it's definitely taboo to still talk about mental health, but it's getting better. I think that people are acknowledging that a lot of people go through mental health struggles, so by talking about it more, it's less taboo and people can develop the vocab for it and have the conversations about it. Uh, when there's a soccer match, you see everyone comes in the community and then we all be jubilant and then we'll be dancing and everyone forgets, forgets about their indifferences and we all join arms together and celebrate at the moment at that time. So that's one of our strengths. And another strength of my community is resilience. Despite all the challenges that we've been through or any adversity that comes to us, we try to bounce back. So that's one of the strengths that I'm very proud of my community. Um, I feel like my community isn't tied together by faith or religion or something that I guess can unite us like that. But for us, I think that food is the one thing that ties us together. I think in relation to mental health or um, shared issues, like you can connect with other people through food, like, like parents may not tell you that they love you, but they'll always like bring you food. And in a way, that's a form of connecting with your culture. I think the strengths and values within my community, we always united no matter what. We always um, generous when someone's in need. They would always like be there for each other. Talk to someone you trust, or someone who has more experience in dealing with such issues. That would be my only thing, like find someone you trust with actually experience in dealing with those stuff and then you share your experience too. What about if you feel like you don't have anyone that you trust that you could go talk to? So basically one thing I, I did when I was coping through this with no one there was probably through my art craft. So mostly anytime, anything that I feel probably I'll probably try and convey through a canvas or a poetry something like that as a way of expressing whatever I'm going through. I 100% agree. I used to draw and write as a way of like expressing my emotions and as a way of, I guess, dealing with mental health. So, because it does help, like instead of bottling it up, you're having it out on a canvas. You're, like, I guess, thinking through your thoughts on paper, so it's not just like internalized the whole time. My message would be that it's okay to feel the feelings that you're feeling and it's not shameful to experience these things. You should always try and be the best version of yourself. So part of that is seeking help and to make yourself feel better and improve your life. <laughs>